Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-80. The previous episode revealed a bathhouse available for use by the party, which was quickly jumped at. The females of the group filled the three-stall cleaning station with Cave Silvertongue standing watch. Once the ladies had taken a long overdue respite, the bard took his turn in the stall. His refreshing cleanse was interrupted by the sudden appearance of the watch commander, Tressa Norink. While startling Cave at her presence, her words were more disturbing. She inquired as to the party's intent in Tunis and pointed out that a widespread message of miscreants from Phoenix may be traveling in this direction. Tressa pointed out that the group didn't completely match the wanted poster, but was close enough for the inquiry. With the assurance that the party meant no problems, the two went their separate ways. We rejoin the group as Cabe frantically calls the women into the men's chamber to discuss the new information. The women hurried into the men's room as they were working on drying their hair. The tone in the bard's voice was concerning and it was clearly evident that he had discovered something of importance. Closing the door, the group fixated on the half-dressed cave as he explained what Tressa had divulged to him about the message. Bulger began to laugh and wave his hands at the other members of the group with a scary finger wave of, Ooh, I'm hanging out with wanted criminals. The others did not find much humor in it, and Lady Arena quickly told the gnome to knock it off. This was serious. Sister Elaine and Fargus Stoutheart were clearly worried, but no less so than Karina the Waif. This could be a huge problem, pointed out Sister Elaine as the rest of the group nodded. The former sailor inquired as to why they would be wanted as if there was something he needed to know. The group re-explained their success in Phoenix and pointed out that certain underworld figures were not happy about the issue. We were warned that this could happen, pointed out the mage. The group discussed the matter at length and admitted that time away from the city had given them a lapse in their fates. Karina pondered if the issue meant that the holy man and Dingus had failed to clear the party's name. The group spoke for nearly an hour about the issue and what to do about it. Karina pointed out that she caught Tressa watching the group intently and may be a liability, but Cabe disagreed. Now, I think if she were looking to take care of us, <coughs> she certainly had the upper hand against me in the uh, <coughs> bath stall. I think she was trying to determine if we were going to be a problem or not. I think she may be trustworthy. The group stared at the half-elf who noticed the tension in the room ratchet up a bit. He held up his hands before the mage spoke. Do you think she is trustworthy enough to hold a frank discussion with her about the events as we saw them? She will obviously be keeping an eye on us for the remainder of our stay, which is creepy to say the least. Sister Elaine interjected that she could just speak with her directly and play it by ear, but some members were less than receptive to that concept. A heated discussion followed, but it was decided that Cabe and Sister Elaine would speak with the Watch Commander about the issue and feel her out as to see how to proceed. The group had felt all of their presence may be better, but the realization that a group of armed, seasoned adventurers facing off with a City Watch Commander may present a negative and possibly even an aggressive appearance. In the end, the party agreed to follow the Cleric's play but be close at hand in the event that things went sideways. The woman and Bard finished getting cleaned up as Fargus and Karina headed out to find Tressa. A few minutes later, they came back reporting that the guard headquarters wasn't far away and near a tavern. The party agreed to have Bulger and Karina go into the libations business next door. Fargus would take up a position at the smithy across the street, and Lady Irena would move to the back of the guard station. Cabe and Sister Elaine took deep breaths and entered the guard station. Tressa Norink looked up from the desk surrounded by guards. Seeing the pair, she ordered her men out and told them to shut the door. Putting her feet up on the desk, the swordswoman seemed quite at ease with the pair, despite their weapons being in prominent display. <sighs> what can I do for you two? 
said the woman as she slid a piece of paper across her desk, which was caught by the half-elf. Sister Elaine explained that she and the others wanted to set the record straight and were present to be upright about their intentions. Tressa nodded with a non-committal look on her face, which again put the pair in an uneasy position. Cape finished scanning the document and handed it over to Elaine, who also read it. The thing is, started Cabe, we did come from Phoenix, and there were some issues. Now before you get all judgy, please hear us out. Cabe continued, but stopped as Sister Elaine began to laugh, laugh and tossed the letter back onto the desk, which was taken by the emotionless commander. That letter is crap. It's not a legal document, and you are most certainly aware of it. That is a letter from the crime syndicate putting a bounty on our heads. Her appearance was quite indignant as she looked across the table at the woman. My question to you is, what are your intentions with this parchment? Kate became rigid as the two women stared at each other and gulped as the tension quickly rose. Without breaking the stare, Tressa folded the piece of paper and tore it into quarters before tossing it into a small fire pit. Nothing. I plan on doing nothing about it, brave priestess. Your willingness to confront the situation head-on tells me all I need to know about your intentions. Granted, you have placed the others in good positions in case things went bad. However, you came in on your own, and after getting a snippet of information about your past, I respect that, and it tells me you are good people. The woman turned her back to the pair and produced a small tray with seven wine glasses and a decanter on it. I expected you all to come in, but thought you may take a less imposing position, which was the wiser choice. She poured the red wine into a small goblet and gave one to each adventurer before quaffing her own quickly. Sensing no toxin in the beverage, both Cabe and Sister Elaine quickly consumed theirs before rising to their feet with the commander. Did you want to have your associates come in for a glass or just keep it our secret? She inquired. The bard held up his goblet for a refill, which Tressa quickly accommodated, filling her own. Sister Elaine covered hers with her hand and politely declined. To your health, saluted the warrior to Cade and gulped down the contents again, followed by the bard reciprocating. Tressa pointed out that she had to make the rounds and the pair were certainly welcome to join her or attend to their own business. The cleric smiled and bowed, stating that she would take her leave and report the outcome to the rest of the party. But Cabe offered to attend to the rounds with the commander. His response brought a slight smile to her face, and she seemed to enjoy the half-elf's company. As the trio left the building, Tressa glanced at a locket, pointing out to Sister Elaine to tell the gnome not to gamble at the table. Those participants are cheaters. Confused initially, the pair of adventurers mused that the locket must be magical. As they exited, Lady Irena came up quickly as Cabe and Tressa sauntered down the street. Fargus came over across the street, watching the pair as they left. The two peppered the holy woman with questions, but, them, but she had them stop. We need to get into the tavern and stop Bulger from gambling away his earnings. Stunned, the pair followed the cleric into the tavern where Bulger was just sitting down to a table with three individuals of nondescript nature. Karina noticed their entrance and stopped speaking with the cute bartender long enough to smack the gnome on the shoulder. Bulger stood up and apologized to the gamblers despite their request for him to join the game. The five huddled near the front, and the cleric motioned them outside. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.